A solenoid is a type of electromagnet. Oh wow, sir. This is a new term, electromagnet. I'll come to electromagnet, don't worry. First, let's look at the entire definition and then I'll come to electromagnet and what is this electromagnet and why this term as electromagnet and all that. So a solenoid is a type of electromagnet, the purpose of which is to generate a controlled magnetic field through a coil wound into a tightly packed helix. Oh my God. When I look at this definition, and if I was a student, and if I would have seen this definition, well, this would have freaked me out. I would have been, oh my God, this is something which is, which is uh, tricky. There are a lot of terminologies which I don't understand, like uh, wound around tightly packed helix. What is that? What is that? Okay. Then controlled magnetic field. Okay. Electromagnet. So two, three terms. I'll come to each one of it slowly. Don't worry. Now we all have at some point of time experienced a bar magnet. A bar magnet, these are called as permanent magnets. So they have a definitive property that is attractive property and repulsive property. So you know that there are two polarities, correct? These are very basic things that I'm talking about. We know that there is a south pole, there is a north pole. Now, when we discovered this magnetic property and we know that this magnets are actually capable of uh, producing forces of attraction and repulsion, we thought that we can get some work or uh, some sort of uh, a machine can be built or can be made in such a way where we can get some useful work. But the problem with uh, these materials were that they were permanent magnets. So if something was attracting, then it will remain attached to this. Whereas we need something like piston or and cylinder, you know the motion, right? To and fro, to and fro. So that consistently we are getting some work, mechanical work I'm talking about right now. So for this, we wanted some kind of a device or a material which can be magnetized and can be demagnetized as per our convenience, okay? And here goes the most important application of the ostrich experiment. What you have got is that the basic idea that if you make current to flow through a conductor, you have generated a magnet. You have created a magnet. Which means that if you need magnetism, if you need these magnetic forces, all you require is a current carrying conductor. Correct. Which means that if I switch off the current, then the material or that conductor ceases to be a magnet. Which means I can control this magnetic property, isn't it? And that is wonderful because then, then what happens? If something is getting attracted, I want it to be attracted only till this point, I'll switch off the current. It remains here only. Did you understand? Did you understand? All right. Consider a current carrying conductor like this and consider an iron nail or something which is made up of an iron over here, okay, a magnetic material. I switch on the current, suddenly magnetic field is induced and you will see that this starts getting attracted, obviously, because there is magnetic field, right? And I want it only to move till here, I'll switch it off. Now I want it to go away, I'll reverse the direction of the current and if I take a magnet, now if I take a magnet and if this was North Pole and this, through this, the current is flowing in such a way, through this conductor, the current is flowing in such a way that we know that we can generate these North Pole and South Pole, so-called North Pole and South Pole. Obviously, we have to see the details of all this as we go forward, okay? So, what is an electromagnet is just current carrying conductors whose magnetism can be controlled by making the current flow through it, okay? The Current, once it is switched off, it turns back into the normal material that it is, loses its magnetic properties. And if you want to reverse this magnetic property, which means if you want to make the North Pole as South Pole and South Pole as North Pole, all you have to do is reverse the direction of the current. So now this is much more controlled. And you know, the best example is the motors. The motors that we use, all the electrical motors, they work on this simple principle. This simple principle is the idea behind all the motors. Whether you talk about those motors which are now driving the electrical vehicles or whether you talk about the motors through which the pumps are driven and you get water from the bottom, right? 
So wherever you are converting electrical energy to mechanical energy, all right, it is only by this phenomena. So these are called as electromagnets. What is the meaning of electromagnets? Those things which through which when you know pass the current through, they convert themselves in magnets. Correct? They start behaving like magnets. Once the current is switched off, it is normal. Okay? So we wanted really strong magnets. We wanted to create really strong magnets and that's also one of the most important uses of the solenoid. So how does solenoid actually converts to magnet? How will the field lines look like? Why do we use it as an electromagnet? And how do we use it in motors and all that? How, how does all this application uh, come into picture? We are going to see all that, okay? But the next term is we can generate a controlled magnetic field. I hope now you understand that how we can generate a controlled magnetic field. If you want a magnetic field, make the current flow through. If you don't want the magnetic field, switch off the current. If you want the magnetic field to reverse its direction, well, make the current flow in opposite direction. That's how you control it. And if you basically want to increase the intensity of magnetic field, and you know that it is directly dependent on the amount of current that is flowing through this wire, increase the current. Then you understand? So this is how you can generate a controlled, a magnet which is in your control. All right, okay. Did you get this? All right. Now, how it is made? It is made through a coil which is wound tightly around a packed helix. What is a helix? Well, it's actually a geometrical shape. Okay, it's like a, a coil. I'll show you the picture how it is. So this is how it looks like, right? We all know springs, right? That is of a helical shape. Okay, so it is of this type. And this base is generally made up of a non-conductor to hold them in place, to hold it together, all right? And these are all helical coils and this is how you wound it one on the other okay so what about the magnetic properties we'll talk about the magnetic properties don't worry we'll see that how once we start making the current flow through this they start behaving like they start behaving like a magnet yes okay we have also seen that once you make current flow through these uh, now we'll call it as solenoid so solenoids and if you suspend them freely they always, they always align themselves along north and south direction, which was exactly the same as the directional behavior shown by a bar magnet. Did you get it? So it can be turned into something like a bar magnet, but everything is in our control. Okay. The magnetic field is in our control. The direction also is in our control. That means if I reverse the direction of the current, then everything can be changed all that. So we'll talk about how does all this magnetic field generate, what will be the value, how to calculate all that because of a solenoid. Okay, now I hope things are getting pretty simple for you. Now once you read this definition again, you will now say that yes, this, this, this totally makes sense. Let's read it now one more time before we go ahead. So the definition says a solenoid is a type of electromagnet, clear sir? The purpose of which is to generate a controlled magnetic field, absolutely clear, through a coil wound around a tightly packed helix. Understood this? All right, shall we go ahead? Shall we? Everyone okay with it? Let's go ahead. Now, when you talk about a solenoid like this and you connect them across a DC power supply and uh, you have got one terminal connected to the positive end of the battery and you know now that the current will be flowing like this, right? The current will be flowing like this and this generally denotes north and south pole, okay? So you see that once you connect it, the direction of the magnetic field will be orienting along north and south and once, once you have changed uh, the polarity of the battery, then you see that okay the polarity of this uh, field also changes okay so which means that it is somehow behaving like a magnet so now let's check out that how does it generate magnetic field so if i look at it i can just think of this as so many coils which are just you know connected like this with some gap in between and when uh, they are actually made we make them very tightly wound to each other okay so if you think of a 
of a, of a ring like this, wherein if you think that the current is coming uh, towards me like this, then obviously you can always uh, draw or plot the like. Uh, the, the magnetic field lines, right? Or <laughs> not the electric field lines, magnetic field lines. So when you have a ring which is carrying some current, let us say I, you can always draw the magnetic field lines and we have seen and we have done all the analysis with respect to a ring. Now when it comes to solenoid, if you try to plot the lines of forces or the magnetic fields lines, this is how they look like, okay? So this end, one end will start behaving as North Pole, other end will start behaving as South Pole. <laughs> And if you change the polarity of the battery, the polarity of these poles will also get reversed. Okay, that is how you can control both the things. Well, you can change the value of the or intensity of the magnetic field by increasing the value of the current or decreasing the value of current. And you can change the polarity. You can change the polarity by reversing the direction of the current. Okay, so it's somewhat similar to what pattern we had seen in case of a bar magnet. Okay, no problem.